Monday, November 19th, 2018, Monaco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. This morning, I want to talk about how uh, you should be your own central bank and how that, you, that will make you uh, more of a free individual, uh, not only uh, financially, but uh, I would say politically. And uh, I will also talk about two books that I think... Uh, <laughs> you know, would be banned uh, in schools and probably are banned in schools. And that's why not many people read it. Uh, one of them is called The Law by Frederick uh, Bastiat, French economist, philosopher from the uh, first half of uh, the 19th century. The other one is by Murray Rothbard, What Has Government Done to Our Money? And these two books for me are really key to understand how the world operates monetarily and uh, how can I say politically. Uh, it shows uh, basically how those spheres have been hijacked by the powers that be. So I'll talk about these. Uh, many of you probably have heard about these books uh, from my previous videos, but I, as I'm getting more and more new subscribers, I need to keep updating and keep uh, refreshing these uh, lessons. Uh, I think it's... Uh, as I said, you know, if they taught this at uh, Harvard or the London School of Economics or at high school, uh, people would have a very different opinion of things. They wouldn't be as collectivist uh, as they are. Uh, and I don't think that's a good thing. Uh, anyway, uh, it's uh, about 10 to 8 a.m. this morning. So this week, uh, it will probably be a, a little quieter towards the end of the week mainly because there's U.S. Uh, Thanksgiving on Thursday. Uh, so the markets uh, will be, you know, on Wednesday, it will probably be very quiet already, uh, probably a half day for a lot of the exchanges in the U.S. Europe, of course, will uh, will keep trading uh, during Thanksgiving and, uh, you know, the Friday after, the Black Friday. And it's interesting uh, about Black Friday, uh, even though... Uh, there is no celebration of Thanksgiving here in the UK. Black Friday has become a tradition, <laughs> uh, which is weird. You know, uh, it's more of the uh, commercialism, uh, trying to get people to buy things they don't need. And I've noticed uh, they've even done a, a pre-Black Friday sale here in the UK last week. So it's uh, amazing how the world's uh, changing. Um I'm not sure about the continental Europe if they, they are into Black Friday, probably as well. Anything to try to get people to buy more things. See where, where the markets are this morning. Uh, have a look at natural gas, which we're looking a little more closely at uh, this morning. So we've got spot gold at 12.20.50 right now. It's down 80 cents. It's, uh, it's come off a little bit earlier overnight. The low has been 12.18. The high has been 12.23.80. That's the spot price. Silver is unchanged at 14.40. Range has been 14.34 to 14.45. So fairly quiet. Uh, the Dow as well and the other uh, indices, the futures, are quite uh, subdued and not very, not moving around a lot. And I think that's a little bit surprising, seeing that uh, what happened. Uh, between uh, Vice President Pence and the Chinese president uh, at the APEC summit. Didn't look like it went very well. They didn't really, it was an acrimonious summit as some have described uh, about trade. But uh, yeah, right now the Dow is down one point, 25,400. Uh, the low has been 25,346. So, uh, you know, not uh, much going on. 25,415, sorry, down one point. So we have been down about 60 points, which isn't that much considering uh, the moves we've had recently. The high has been 25,475. So minus 60 to plus 60. S&P uh, futures completely unchanged, 27,3640. Uh, NASDAQ 100 future up 0.17 of a percent at 68.79. <coughs> Excuse me. Currencies, uh, yeah, the pound is continuing to drift a little higher. 
Looks like Theresa May is still the leader of the Conservative Party for now. The Brexit uh, situation still fluid, as they say. Pound is up uh, a quarter of a percent at 128.56. Uh, euro uh, is, yeah, euro is virtually unchanged. 114.12. Dollar is slightly lower against the yen. 112.74. It's down less than 10 pips. So virtually unchanged the currencies here. Uh, dollar is uh, a little stronger against the yuan, up uh, 0.2 of a percent at 693.57. WTI crude is up 1.4 percent at 57.50 and uh, the Brent, the uh, Brent crude is up 1 percent at 67.66. Uh, what about natural gas? Uh, I mean I made a video yesterday about how natural gas prices have gone up like f over 40 percent since the beginning of October from three dollars to four dollars 27 uh, last Friday that's the future right now uh, we're seeing it gap up again we're at uh, four dollars sixty so the recent high is four dollars uh, around four dollars ninety three so that's uh, something to keep an eye on uh, you know as I said yesterday so natural gas uh, which is all you know almost as important uh, as a source of energy as crude oil especially for the United States uh, Europe as well not as much but uh, very important and uh, there's an article today I saw a headline on zero hedge that uh, it says here brutally cold temperatures and I quote threaten to devastate Black Friday sales temperatures will range from 20 to 30 degrees below average from the t for the time of year later this week so Someone noted, uh, made a comment in my video about natural gas that is going up because of the cold temperatures. Uh, partly because of that, I guess, but also if you look at seasonally, uh, the move we're seeing in natural gas right now is uh, unusual. Uh, I do agree that it affects you know the seasonal uh, prices of natural gas, the fact that we're going into winter, but not as much as we've seen lately. Uh, the the bond markets are fairly subdued right now uh 10 year yield is still under control at uh, 307 um uh, 308 right now up one basis points the italian 10 year yield is at 349 so what about being your own central bank yeah i i i need to uh keep repeating that and what does that mean well that means trying to be outside uh if you're going to hold uh savings monetary savings uh if you're gonna if you're able to unfortunate enough to be able to to save some of your income uh, and i say that because a lot of people uh not everyone is able to uh to save after the end of the month uh you know their outgoings uh they struggle and they even have to borrow so but if you are lucky enough I would say you need to try to keep as little uh, of your savings of the wealth you've been able to produce uh, above the, your consumption needs. You need to keep it close to you uh, and try not to keep it uh, in the fraudulent fiat banking banking <laughs> banking system. Excuse me. Uh, legally, uh, not only in the U.S. but in Europe your money that you think you have in the bank is not yours it's an unsecured loan to the bankers and uh, many of you think that uh, it's insured by the FDIC or the FSC in the UK and yeah to an extent it is if there's a isolated crisis and your bank goes bust if you don't have uh, you know if you have below the limit of the insurance you probably get paid but if there's a systemic crisis, I can guarantee you that uh, FDIC and other insurers around the world don't have enough money to pay everyone. So what will happen? Uh, there won't be a taxpayer bailout next time. There will be a bail-in. They will take your money. Um, the banks will take depositors' money. That's just as almost as well as having a taxpayer bailout because most people who have money in the bank are taxpayers, right? Um, it's just uh, the way they've uh, 
structured it. So how do you do that? Well, first of all, well, try uh, to pay off your debts. Uh, that's being in the system. And if you do have extra savings, try to buy physical gold and silver. Maybe some cryptocurrencies, more speculative, but out of the system. Uh, and uh, if you're in the UK, I've spoken about uh, the promo code Monaco64. That will help you uh, get your foot in the door if you're interested in precious metals. I'm not telling you uh, what to do. I'm telling you what I do. Uh, promo code Maneco64 is for goldinvestments.co.uk. Uh, arguably the oldest uh, bullion dealer in London. Family run. Uh, I've been dealing with them for over 15 years. Reputable firm. Um, for the US, I mean, that's for, you know, my US viewers, uh, there's plenty of uh, bullion dealers out there you just need to uh, look online or locally as well some coin shops uh, just try to shop around and get the best deal uh, in terms of uh, you know premium but make sure they're reputable they've been around for a while uh, you know they've been they're not just like a, a new company uh, and uh, what about the uh, the books that I think are important that I think uh, would be banned or probably are, you know, not on the radar of the uh, mainstream educational institutions. Well, the first one is uh, by Frederick Bastia, uh, The Law, and it says the classic uh, blueprint for a just society. Uh, what does it say here uh, about the law? Uh, one of the things that Frederick Bastia touches upon is uh, into legal plunder. <laughs> he says that uh, the law should be an instrument of justice, but that uh, governments and states have hijacked the law and they use it to uh, legally plunder individuals. So it says here, it is impossible to introduce into society a greater change and a greater evil than this, the conversion of the law into an instrument of plunder. And he goes on to say, this is what, Bastia said, and this is this was in 1850. For France of 1850 was in political turmoil in the aftermath of the revolution of 1848. The tide of socialism was sweeping the nation. So already then, one man stood alone against the tide. The precocious son of a merchant, Frederick Bastia, devoured the writings of free trade economists such as Adam Smith and Jean-Baptiste Say. Rejecting the popular notions of his day, Bastia began to speak and write against ideas he believed were undermining natural harmonies of interest among men. First as an orator and essayist, later as a member of the Legislative Assembly, he became known for writing for withering logic and devastating wit. He also became isolated politically. The struggle between left and right was for power and plunder, yet Bastia believed that the only purpose of government was to guarantee individual rights and freedom. The state, he declared in perhaps his most memorable epigram, is that great fiction by which everyone tries to live at the expense of everyone else. And one of the interesting things I get about this book is that uh, he explains how uh, you know, individual rights, like individual rights to life, property, happiness, if you want to say it, call it that, uh, is natural, you know, uh, in nature. And uh, people, you know, even animals like dogs, they try to protect their things. And it's the same thing for humans. And that government has only hijacked that uh, mechanism and uh, they've uh, corrupted it into uh, trying to... Uh, you know, they're supposed to be protecting the individual, their property and life. Uh, and they're not because of, uh, you know, <laughs> all the heavy taxation regulation. So it's not a long book. I'll put a link below in the description if you're interested. You can find probably uh, free PDFs uh, for this book. It's about less than 80 pages. A very good read. And the other one, of course, is the classic, I think, for uh, learning about this was more philosophy and politics this is more about money uh what has government done to our money the great case for a hundred percent gold dollar and i agree with the murray rothbard on that he's more of the austrian school ilk 
He's an American writer. He's not around anymore. He was around, I think, from the 50s to the 80s or early 90s. Basically, he explains as well how, you know, government has hijacked uh, our money and brought in legal tender laws um, and that force you into using their uh, debt-based money. Uh, for me, and, and it's another short book. Uh, it's less than 200 pages. Very good read. This is not for economists. It's for anyone can read this book. And it's very interesting. Uh, and it tells you exactly what money is. Because there seems to be in academia some kind of, uh, you know, mental block as to how to define money, right? Uh, but uh, he, and uh, the, the most interesting part about this book is how he uses the regression theory analysis to, uh, you know, uh, explain what money is. And by that, I mean he goes back uh, to before, uh, you know, humans used money, uh, where they used barter uh, or uh, direct exchange. And then he, and he shows how that evolved into indirect exchange with the use of something that is the most marketable commodity. Uh, and that becomes money. And he, you know, gold and silver have been uh, par excellence, uh, those most marketable commodities for the last few thousand years, not paper money forced upon by legal tender law. So I highly recommend these two books. It will help you uh, become your own central bank and your own uh, sovereign individual, in my opinion. So if you like this video, make sure you hit the like button. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet, and you can also follow me on Steemit, DTube, and on Twitter. I wish you all a great day, and I'll talk to you later. Take care. Bye.